I paid a grand total of £61, which equivalates to around about 80 US dollars for a faulty one terabyte Xbox One S. The fault states, we are selling this as faulty, the console's HDMI port does not work, and that the warranty seal is in fact intact. Let's check it out. What I can confirm straight away is that the warranty seal itself looks to be fine. There is a little bit of writing though, which when you remove this warranty sticker, it says the word Microsoft, and that is coming through a little bit, so I don't know. I'm not 100%. We're also taking a look at the HDMI port. On the face of things, it looks fine. There doesn't look to be any loose pins from what I can see. I think now we give it a test. Let's plug in the power and a HDMI cable. Does it actually turn on being the first test? Let's find out. Yes, okay, result. Good so far. Do we get anything on the screen? Ooh, we're having a bit of a disco. Okay, this is a pretty interesting one. I'm just gonna wiggle the port about and see if that makes a difference. No, I think the HDMI port itself is absolutely fine. I believe what the issue is gonna be is the encoder chip. I'm not playing the matrix. This is just exactly what it looks like. Let's get down to the motherboard. We now have the Xbox One S apart. And what I can tell you is that, ironically, this is probably one of the cleanest boards I've ever seen. I haven't done anything to it. Even the thermal paste, it's not ideal. Obviously, there's a bit of a greasy part you can see to the right side of the die here, but it's still spread nice and evenly. There's no like gaps or anything. Hardly any dust on the board whatsoever. Like if I just shine a light like, like that, it's actually very surprising, especially down the power rail here. This is where you would usually see quite a lot of uh, dust buildup. What we're gonna do though is focus on where the issue is as to why we have some funny lines on the screen. That is gonna be because of this chip right here. I think. I could be completely wrong. Wouldn't surprise me. This is called the retimer chip. Some people call it other things, but that's what I call it. I don't want to go into specifics what it does because I don't really know. All I know is that the HDMI port here feeds into the retimer chip. It retimes it and then it sends signals to all over the board, I think. We need to replace this bad boy. Let's go under the scope. Here is that chip that I was just pointing to. And if we follow the trace upwards, you'll be able to see the HDMI port. What I do want to do is just confirm that there's nothing wrong with the HDMI port. I was giving it a good old wiggle and it seemed to be fine. I am just going to poke the pins quick to make sure that we are good. Yep, there's no issues whatsoever with the HDMI port. This chip, from what I remember, can be quite tough to get off the board. So we're going to go 450 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 70%. Let's go. I'm going to circulate the heat around the board and warm up the area first. Now I'm going to focus in on the chip. When I see the solder start to melt and molten, I'll remove it. Quite a big tip as well. Here we go, it's molten, you see it? Coming with the tweezers. And take it off. Right, so I've got myself here a new chip. This is a TDP158. And as you can see in the top left, you see the dot. You see the dot on the board here, and you see the dot on the chip roughly in around the same spot. That indicates pin one. So this is the way that the chip is gonna go. I'm gonna move this to the side. I'm gonna heat up the board. Then I'm gonna apply some flux. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of flux down now. Just there. The flux is just making our job a little bit easier. I'm not going to replace the solder on the board. I'm going to leave the factory stuff that's on here. Same temperature of 450 degrees Celsius, but I'm going to lower the airspeed. I'm going to put it down to 50% instead of 70. Right, let's go. Again, make the board nice and hot. Spread the flux around. See the solder start to wet. I'm going to drop the chip on. Put it in place roughly. I'm gonna take the hot air off. I'm gonna put flux around. And I'm gonna come back in with the air. And surface tension should pop it into place. I'm just gonna hold it down. Put some more heat. Come off. Clean with a toothbrush and some IPA. Finish it off with some uh, cotton buds. 
make sure we get all the flux. And now we're just going to inspect it and make sure that everything is okay. That looks fine. See all the solder joints around the chip, they look okay. Make sure we get all angles of the board as well. This is just the opposite side. Yeah, it looks fine. Looks okay to me. I just now need to clean off the, uh, the thermal paste, the old stuff. Apply some new. Lovely. Now all that's left is to put it back together and give it a test. Wish me luck. Plugging in the power now. Power's in. All right, moment of truth, here we go. We get power, that's always a good start. Do we get anything on the screen is the question. I put it in the wrong HDMI port. Do we get anything on the screen? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Wicked. We don't have that horrible matrix effect that we had previously, but it has gone to 360p, just as I say that. Pretty sure that when you put a new chip on, it defaults to 640 by 480, which is why it looks the way it does. Now if I go 1080p, does it work? Yes, it does. Works absolutely fine. I haven't got a 4K TV. I've just put a Far Cry disc in as well, and as you can see, it's installed in the disk drive. Works fine. Lovely. I declared this Xbox One S fixed. I think those chips cost about 10 to 15 pounds each, but I still made quite a nice profit on this console. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. We're very, very close now to 5,000 subscribers. It's absolutely nuts. That being said, have a great rest of your week slash weekend, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.